Hello everyone and welcome to Whitetail Driven Solutions YouTube channel. We are bringing you tips, strategies, and tactics to help you and your property be more successful. We not only invite you to subscribe to our channel, but also hit the notification button to be notified when we release new videos. Everybody is out looking forward to spring and um, going into the one of the most crucial, if not the most crucial times of the of the entire year as far as uh, deer habitat, making the right moves, getting ready for fall. And time and time and time again, I see uh, mistakes being made this time of the year and it all revolves around, a lot of it revolves around, everybody wanting to get out and get that first initial food plot in the ground and um, taking wrong information or just not having the um, the experience to know how these uh, example is hunting a food plot and how much power the food plot has and how powerful the food plot can be in destroying your entire season destroying your entire property for years and years so topic today is had a gentleman reach out that had uh, someone else look at this property years ago and was uh, giving him some ideas on what to create as far as a food plot and he wanted to know he uh, reached out to me to see what my cost would be to um, open this food plot area up for him and planning it so of course my first um, question always is is uh, always like have uh, folks drop a pin on uh, google earth or give me some kind of an idea where it's at and as soon as a he um, he put a pin on it and sent it to me and i started looking at what he had in mind or what the other uh, person um, in the industry had told him their recommendations would be. I initially um, went back with a response on, um, you know, what kind of were you thinking of planting? Uh, he was, you know, he's looking at clovers or brassicas. And um, so it didn't take me very long to figure out that these tree stand areas that he wanted to, this, this uh, food plot area that he wanted to create connected to this tree stand locations. And his, not only was he going to put um, one bow stand he was also going to, and was re and was recommended to do this, um, put a rifle blind directly on the acre and a half, possibly a two acre food plot. So I um, started talking with him a little bit about ideas and, and uh, how he was gonna hunt it and how crucial hunting these, these properties are, especially small parcels. Now, this small parcel is even more more it has to be more st strategically hunted and I'm, we're going to show you the reasons here in just a minute just a minute and uh, this just goes to prove that before you go into planting a food plot you have to make sure that you're going to be able to hunt this property and the, the best way to explain it guys is you can have the the most beautiful food plot in the world a big square food plot or a rectangular food plot that you see everybody planting and if you cannot hunt it, if you cannot physically get in and out of this, these farms without doing damage, in other words, kicking these, blowing these deer off, do not, do not let somebody tell you that these doe groups are just going to, um, that, you know, these doe family groups that may live on your 10 acres or the 10 acres to the north of you or whatever the case is, aren't going to be affected. That is seriously wrong information. Um, in the Midwest, like we talked, Kansas, Iowa, you might be able to get away with that in certain certain locations, but still, um, I still don't recommend um, hunting that way, even in states that are um, not as high pressured. So what we're going to do, I'm going to jump to the, the diagram here again today. We're going to show you how reaching out to someone to make sure that your ideas of what you're trying to create are going along the right path and if you don't reach out how detrimental it can be so you can see the diagram that I have on the board behind me and this is a diagram that I we had we have created after the fact the first step was when the, the gentleman called he was take he was given information he was, took the information he just reached out to me to want to want to know how much I would charge him to come in and excavate the stumps out and get it planted and um, possibly uh, maybe even help him hang his tree stands and get his uh, blind put in there this area right here. So first of all, we're gonna I'm gonna explain the situation to you. This is a 10 acres. He's got 10 acres to the north of him. This is the 10 acres to the north. His 10 acres is only 330 feet wide by 1330 deep. So it's right at 10 acres. So this is a north and south gravel road. 
that runs on the entire west side of his um, his uh, his property. He's got five, a five acre chunk to the south of him. That's that's uh, the neighbors the neighboring south five acres is um, only like two hundred feet wide and it runs the entire length. So he's got five acres and he's got two five acre chunks to the south of him again. He's got a, another gravel road. So you can see this is one of those typical small parcel mid Michigan. Uh, properties that can turn into a nightmare in a hurry that uh, you're not getting all of your success back that you could. So the recommendation that he had is he wanted to, there's a little parking spot right here already, that, which is the southwest corner of his property, and he wanted to, he wants to eventually put a maybe a little cabin or something here. So southwest corner of the property. The recommendation that he had was um, two two spots, but they had determined that this here was the area that they were going to plant a uh, acre or an acre and a half food plot. He was actually going to put his um, rifle blind on this side this side of it um, because there's a path that goes, there's an old logging road that goes to it, so he was going to walk down across and go to it or, or walk from here through because that's the way he took me into it. And um, as you can see, you can see where this the, the pieces of the puzzle are starting to fall um, in the uh, wrong pile here. Cedar Swamp to the north, just keep in mind this, this property road frontage is only 330 feet wide, 110 yards. So obviously, guys, you think about this, with a rifle situation, you could not only shoot all of this, you could shoot this entire area um, with, with a rifle. But these two 10-acre parcels that are stacked on top of each other here are 100, 110 yards by 110 yards. So, so you could shoot across both of these 10 acres. They're that, that narrow. And what the uh, gentleman recommended that he did, this is a ridge line system that comes here. So this is flat. I'll try to, you know, drawings are sometimes, you know, it's obviously a flat board. You can't see here. But this is a flat uh, or flat area right here. He's 75 yards to the, to the ridge. When I had his, uh, I was there, I marked off 75 yards from the parking spot to the top of the ridge before it goes into the cedar swamp. This right here is, is about 20 feet higher. This ridge line is about 20 feet higher than a cedar swamp, and it comes around, and the ridge kind of just runs back to the south and just just levels out. Down here, it's only about 5 foot higher. Here, it's about 20 foot higher that comes up out of the swamp. This is all open hardwoods, all oak and, um, and maple, and there's a, a mature tree in there, you know, a 14, 16, 18-inch tree in there every 10 yards. Absolutely no undergrowth in this entire location. Back here, you can see the headwater or the, the uh, starting of the swamp just kind of dissipates right here. And the ridge kind of connects right to, here to the ridge. And it just this is kind of a spring here, if you will, that feeds this swamp. To the west, he has a 240-acre hunt club that this cedar swamp opens up into the neighbor, the neighbor. And what I'll show you here is this cedar swamp runs across onto the neighbors so they actually share this the center of this cedar swamp this driveway to this cabin actually comes in like this and so this he this uh, property line actually splits the cedar swamp in half so he cannot have access he cannot walk down the road or anything and and create this side access like we we like to talk about he can't do this from the uh, north because this is a major deer travel route right through here that comes together that they were using they're using this uh, farm as a bypass and um, there's absolutely no, hardly any habitat in here other, other than the uh, thermal cover that you're getting in here late season. Um, other than that, it's just a bypass. There's very little browse right out the end. And he's about 10 miles from the nearest ag. So just a, just a absolute bypass of a farm here. And uh, low, low habitat in, in uh, you know, value. So what they recommended that he did He's going to put the cabin here. His footpath goes right through here, right down over the bank, right in to this. He was going to create an acre food plot. Not only was he going to create an acre food plot here in a circle, they were going to put the rifle blind on the north side of it, which um, his only access is on the south side, so he has to access on the south, and he can hunt the east, but he can only access on the, on the south fence line because he can't get across the cedar swamp. He could get across it but you take a chance of blowing a bunch of deer out. Anyway, um, so this is where they recommended. Not only did they recommend that they put a, a food plot in here, 
um, and hang a tree stand on the one side of it and a rifle blind on the other side of it. This was the only thing that they had in here. Well, keep in mind, guys, this is 110 yards um, from top to bottom. When I went and found this area, and he had a couple of trees already marked, so we walked down in there, and from the edge of his food plot was 35 yards from the from the uh, fence line and was like 60 yards from this fence line for the south. So in other words, by do, putting this in there where there's no habitat at all, you're going to create an opening, which is going to uh, let the daylight hit the forest floor, which is going to thicken this area around this food plot up, and no, no, no bedding. I had asked him if they had uh, any bedding in mind, and the guy uh, recommended to him that he could just hinge cut some trees off the side of his food plot. So not only are you putting bedding on the food plot, there's no way for him to get in and out. So there was one tree stand location, and that's what they recommended. So to make a long story short, I told him um, that I wouldn't, I wouldn't be interested in opening the food plot um, up for him because it was only going to set him up for disaster. And he actually took this very well. And the way I explained this to him is I said, let me do, do this, I said, and I'll show you what this, by doing this, his quote from the uh, gentleman to put this together was $2,500 to go in and open a food plot and plant it into, um, they were going to plant it to uh, clover and, and uh, maybe put some brassicas or whatever if he wanted to late season. So $2,500. Well, what we created here for $2,500 has actually come up to about 3000 because um, I implemented more trees in. So this is what we come up with. So this, this re keep this in mind, this is the power that, this is the design that people are promoting and pushing on small parcel owners here in a high pressure state where you absolutely should not be on the edge of the food plot to begin with. Not only are they putting them on the edge of the food plot, they're creating bedding on the edge of the food plot. This, this farm, $3,000, $2,500, $3,000 into this farm, this gentleman would never get the success out of this farm so after talking with him we came up with this design for the same amount of money the majority of it is in trees and he's going to work on this um the tree situation here over the years first of all what we're going to do is i told him he's got to get a four-wheeler trail on the south side of this uh fence line we're going to run that four-wheeler trail all the way down help him create that get this all the way to a foot trailer four-wheeler trail all the way down and up the east halfway up the east side here that gives him all the access that he needs. Then what we're going to do is we're going to plant some of these trees, the stagger effect um, spruce trees here, these circles, around his campsite, his, his uh, cabin parking area here, to thicken this up, to block it off, create this. And this is a wooded, this is a typical uh, mid-Michigan, northern Michigan, wooded parcel where you can't go in and you can't plant a, a bunch of uh, switchgrass because that you can't get the amount of trees you'd have to take um, half the timber off the place to get enough daylight in there to plant switchgrass and it's uh, there's not that much timber value on it to begin with so planting all these spruce trees in here to give him this access so he's accessing behind on his property line behind the um, rows of spruce into a tree stand location here what we've done is we've tied this out here by the road so this food plot isn't um, you know, nobody's shooting from the road or, or uh, stopping and, and boogering these deer off. But what I've done is I've created, so we've got side access. So what we've done is I went in here and I took a, scrape, uh, a paint can and a spray paint can and went all the way through here on the center line like you hear me talk about and marked all these trees right on this ridge, right on the edge of this ridge before it drops over and um, to get as much uh, square footage here to deal with as, as feet away from the cabin as we could and um, so he's not you know if in the morning if there's deer um, working this area he's not blowing deer out before we even get started so we're, we're really thickening the thickening this area up what I've done is I've come all the way through and I've left I cut the corner of this uh, ridge this ridge that points out here I cut the corner of it and left a pocket so we're going to do some hinge cutting and some trees in here all of these spruce trees are going to go in. So not only did we surrender the or the surround of the whole property in promoting a whole bunch of, of uh, growth on pine trees because he's got cabins. He's got a cabin to the north of him, and this they do hunt, and there's a tree stand, a neighbor's tree stand, right on his north fence row here that you can see that I found. So by doing this, you create a wall between, between them, and anything that you promote that 
the, the gentleman from the north is going to try to come in and push the envelope and hunt the fence line. His wind is going directly into what we're creating here, and those deer, any especially mature deer, are not going to go to the north, especially when they've got a pull to the west with uh, more um, more uh, habitat created, and that's where that you know five to seven miles is cornfields and stuff like that. So they're going to go. They're going to use this now. The object is is to maintain their movement during the daylight hours during huntable hours. So what we've done here is we've created, I went through and painted the center line all the way out, kept it in the center, made this loop effect, tied it back to the cedar swamp because there's a natural deer trail through the cedar swamp that runs right at the base of this ridge and also runs right through the cedar swamp. This is, um, you know, typical Michigan, um, Minnesota, Wisconsin swamp usage. Um, they're, they're in there, they're using the edge, their, their feet are just on the edge of it where it's dry. And uh, they're using that. There's some, even some cattails in it out towards the road. Anyway, tied this into it. So as soon as they leave that security of that uh, cedar swamp, they're up into this trail system. Now, this trail system is in green, and it's in green for a reason. is because it's going to be planted. It's 10 yards wide, 30 feet wide, and I was able to get 1,500 feet of, of uh, trail system in here created for them. <clears throat> On this trail system... He'll be able to hunt it from the south, put a licking branch right, right in it, or right on the edge of it. So he's going to have one up here, a licking branch up here too. A stand, licking branch. He'll be able to access this, this stand location real easy from the cabin, or walk out the road and in, depending on the sit. And, uh, this is, you know, mainly a north, north wind, um, you know, stand locations. And like I told him, you get into any south, south winds, you get into any, um, you know, um, east winds or or anything that works against you. He's a mile and a half from some of the best uh, um, state land, you know, hunting in our area, and he needs to get out and, and uh, you know, use that uh, to take some pressure off his farm. But back to the farm here. So this is all what I've created. I went through, and I'm going to have a, a logger go down that center that line that I planted, and he's going to cut all the timber value. We went through here. There's $1,500, about $1,500, maybe $2,000 worth of timber that he's going to get back in his pocket, taking this timber out in this line through here, creating this this uh, path. So not only now do you have a logging trail, you have a uh, you have the timber um, back in your pocket, going back towards the value of the uh, of the habitat improvements. So now we have this created; it all hooks together. Now we went in the center, made this hub design hub style design bedding area. Um, small i mean like i said this is you know you're within three 110 yards here so this whole area right here is probably 20 yards and um <clears throat> it's uh, 30 40 feet wide in either direction so these corridors all tie into it you can see these corridors are open back out to the back out like our hub style designs or this pocket that i that we speak of when we do native grass are open back to the food plots and uh all these corridors are open so bedding hinge cut everything to the center you can see there's no hinge cutting to the outside, so you're not taking a chance of busting deer. All this rim right here, this is just open open hardwood in here, and uh, there's no um, there's no hinge cutting to the outside that's going to bed deer right in front of the stand. It's all internal, so not only is it bedding, it's a side cover, so you can be able to get in and out of this. This tree stand, guys, keep in mind, is only 20 yards from his fence row, and the licking branch is another 20 yards. Now he's in inside of this trail here, so it's like 40, 45 yards from the fence row is the center of this this trail system, which is licking branches on. So what you're doing is you're creating. You we were able to create him bedding. We were able to create him this um, this trail system. What this does is it's not a typical round food plot, but this is going to keep deer moving. What you're going to find is all these all these uh, trail cameras are going to be hung. And what you're going to find is he's going to start getting pictures of deer here in the morning. He's going to get a picture here. Next thing he's going to get is he's going to be here. And if he's got wireless um, uh, enough service in that area, which I think he does, he can hang a uh, you know a cell cam in here or something. But he's got so so he's got three locations: one, two, three stand locations, all now being able to access and get in and out of these food plots without being disturbing anything internal. And we've created all this depth all the way around the property that he 
of the deer for security and he's going to get this rhythm of coming now now he's in this situation because it is the end of the swamp it's the spring that's the headwaters if you will that starts this water that goes back towards uh, into that cedar swamp he's now created he is now at the head of the travel pattern for these deer so these deer are going to come across the road into here up the bank into this food plot or along the edge of this because this is all now creating an edge because you're opening all this daylight in here so this is going to be thick on each side we've created you know kept it away from the uh, um, stand locations here as far as the bedding areas tip these trees down really promoted this getting these deer to move all the way around <clears throat> now what you'll see is there's hinge cutting off from what we've created as a food plot now that's not what I do, and I do not promote that in any shape or form when it's on a typical round food plot. And the reason is, is because, like I said, trying to hunt that, you cannot get in and out of it, which you shouldn't be hunting on it anyway. But guys that do want to hunt their food plots, you cannot physically get in and out of it, and you're promoting, you're pre promoting nocturnal deer movement by bedding deer right on the food plot. This, this is a different situation. This is you're trying to, you're trying to place deer... Uh, dispersed deer throughout the whole whole farm you're trying to use what what he has here and you're trying to place line those those up not just in the center here so now if we weren't weren't to do any of this what you're going to do is you're just going to have an inside hub here of a drama filled uh, doe bedding area and <clears throat> I mean this is a like I said this is on a very small spectrum here but what you can see is you're going to not only have this bedding area one now you've got this bedding area two, you've got this bedding area three, you've got this bedding area is four. So you have four bedding areas. This right here is going to turn in, these two are probably going to turn into uh, buck bedding areas or the outsides here, depending on if the uh, resident doe groups um, come in. He doesn't have enough draw to create this overrun doe um, issue. He's going to only create fall movement, which is key for mature bucks. So, as you can see, it's for the same amount of money, with a little more money into his trees here, because he's got a he's got a uh, you know a button this up around the edge. So about the three thousand dollar mark, he's able to come in, and over the years he's going to have to you know um, take into consideration uh, the death rate of these uh, spruce pine you know these spruce that we're planting and stuff. I'm going to replace them, but for the same amount, the same initial amount, now he has three stand locations that I feel very strongly if he takes my advice on how to hunt the wind and gets in and out of here undetected and really watches what he's doing, he's going to have to probably hunt these. He will have to hunt these with a rifle out of these stands. If he wanted to put a box blind, I was telling him this would be the area uh, right in here is I would I would try to put the uh, a box blind, a rifle blind, so he could stay outside of the window and even if you put it here so you could see right down the uh you know look down this uh, line of this food plot and he can he could probably look back down here and internal of this bedding area at parts but when it gets dark he's able to in the mornings as well he's able to get in and out of the stand location from right through here of the corner or up through here on the way in so you can see everything is outside from the outside in all this now has created deer movement across the road where you know that the, the higher volume of deer are to the west. He's going to come in. The deer are going to come into the property, hit the food plots, and be able to create this whole line of movement back out. This is going to take, a, a, if a buck come in here in a normal cruising um, uh, pattern in the morning, let's say, and his way back through here, if he was heading back out, if he was going to make a loop, this deer would be in here during daylight hours for an hour and a half to two hours before he got done all the way through this 1500 I mean if he got back out the road he'd have over 3,000 linear feet of um, of travel so keeping the deer move, moving keeping them moving in your favor not getting winded be able to hunt it and get out by creating this this pocket here that he would have created he had would have no bet no bedding area the does would have been bedded right on the food plot especially if they would have promoted the hinge cutting right on it and he wouldn't have been able to get in and out of it. He would have blew this whole farm, but now taking a step back and looking, and this is a project that we have on the books for 2020, just because of the simple fact that I took the time to explain this and we made this property, um, we made this property huntable on 10 acres. Not only on 10 acres, but 10 acres in Lake County, Michigan, and 
I can guarantee you within, within the, if not the first year, within a couple of years after we get that spruce to really take hold. And that's the dinger of the um, having a, um, you know, that's the, the downside of having a wooded uh, five or 10 acre partial or 20 acre partial. Um, you can't get a lot of that um, initial screening that you could if it was out in the open or a field setting with, um, with uh, native grasses and such. But taking this into consideration, very powerful property coming down the line here for this gentleman. And now his, uh, by doing this, anybody that's got any hunting knowledge that ever wanted to buy this farm from him would, um, it's, it's, all, it's all uphill from here. So sale value, resale value, huntability, all went in went into this uh, thought and a plan, and and I like to uh, see what what comes down the road here for this gentleman in the next couple of years, if he doesn't uh, harvest a buck on it, and that's there's you know deer sign all throughout the entire place right now, just not the sustainable sustainable deer um, numbers, um, sign rub scrapes stuff like that because low low habitat, but by doing this, it's going to totally change the uh, dimension of this farm and uh, looking forward to uh, working with him here in the near future. So perfect idea, perfect example of uh, what 10 acres can do if it's, if it's handled correctly. If you take the advice of somebody that knows, um, the, has the experience, knows what they're doing, and doesn't set you up for failure as far as just putting a 10 acre or a uh, two acre or an acre or two acre food plot in the center of 10 acres and, and uh, hanging tree stands on it and, and swinging for the fences doesn't cut it on in, in uh, our area here in Michigan or in any high pressure state for that matter. So take these tips into consideration, 330 feet wide, 1300, 1330 feet deep, neighbors on both sides of you. Perfect, perfect situation. Should be a, uh, should be a good future for this farm. Thanks guys.